Mr. Smith? Oh, that was probably the lawsuit involving our library expansion. The council had selected a very qualified contractor to manage the project. Smith was always hanging around the construction site, thinking it was his job to micromanage the project. Needless to say, Smith ended up in a verbal confrontation with the contractor. Things got personal, and Smith started talking to other council members about terminating the guy's contract. He also spread some vicious personal rumors around town about the contractor. That wasn't very smart. Did he get the contractor fired? No, but the contractor sued Smith personally for defamation. Our insurance company declined to defend Smith because it was alleged he was acting outside the scope of his authorized duties and acting in a willful and wanton manner. So that's why Smith had to pay for his own legal defense? Yes, he was not acting within the scope of his authority as a council member when he started those vicious rumors. I heard he had to take out a second mortgage to pay his lawyers and a large settlement. Smith learned his lesson the hard way. Being outside the scope of one's authority or acting in a willful and wanton manner will result in a loss of liability protections and insurance coverages. That's good, thank you. Now, Patrick Smith isn't the only elected official who's gotten himself in some trouble. Our former mayor, Joe Appleby, put himself in the middle of a personnel issue. I think I remember this case. Tammy Williams was the director of public works, right? Didn't she try to stop sexual harassment in the street division? What do you think about wearing something like that to work? Guys are jerks, idiots. <laughs> Guys, I've told you about this before. You can't keep doing this. First, I need to see you in my office. In trying to clean up the division, she fired the street supervisor, Bert Simpson. Mayor Appleby, who was drinking buddies with Simpson, was furious and made it his mission to get Tammy fired, and he succeeded. You know, your job can't be replaced. She brought a lawsuit claiming the mayor retaliated against her for trying to eliminate the harassment. The jury awarded her $150,000 in punitive damages that Appleby had to pay out of his own pocket. Wow. What were the key lessons in this case? First, don't act on the basis of personal motives. It was obvious Mayor Appleby wanted to fire Tammy Williams to get revenge for his friend Bert, and that was not in the scope of his authority. Second, we need to delegate personnel issues to the city administration. The council shouldn't be dealing with individual employees other than those who report directly to the council, like our city administrator. We should be focusing on the major legislative and quasi-judicial issues and leave administrative matters to staff. And third, never retaliate against someone for exercising their legal rights. Not only is retaliation against the law, but these claims are among the most difficult and costly to defend. We also had another fallout from the Appleby litigation. The press learned during the trial that Appleby was telling a lot of inappropriate jokes and he was emailing them to the entire council. So the media demanded to see all of the council's emails over several years. I said he sure looked bad after the press got a hold of those. Well, I didn't realize emails were considered public records. Sure. While there are narrow grounds for not releasing them under some circumstances, the basic rule is that emails may be public documents that anyone can review. If you don't want something splashed on the front page of the newspaper, we need to keep it out of our emails. At least we're not the only city making these mistakes. Remember the scandal involving Councilman Arnold over in Clarksville after he got stopped for speeding? Yes, he was caught on television yelling at the police officer for stopping him. I cringe when he shouted at the officer, don't you know who I am? Talk about an abuse of power. <laughs> And that brings me to perhaps the most important lesson. As elected and appointed officials, we must use our powers wisely and with civility. To misuse our position is absolutely improper and is not within the scope of our authority. We shouldn't try to put ourselves above the law or try to get some sort of special privilege because of our position. Explain what you mean by acting with civility. Well, as elected officials, we're perceived as holding the most powerful positions in the city. Because of that perception, 
our words carry a lot of weight. A harsh or ill-considered comment from any of us, especially if made public, can be extremely harmful to our employees' morale, as well as our public image. I once heard Appleby refer to our female employees as the staff hotties. It was embarrassing. Also, we should not participate in or encourage staff bashing in public meetings. We need to keep the focus on issues, not personalities. And then during Tammy's lawsuit, some of the jokes the mayor told during executive sessions were made public. We took another bashing in the press for those. Negative behavior like that can affect our entire organization. If we set a bad example at the top, we can't be surprised when it filters through the entire workforce. I'm so glad we've moved on from those days. Well, this is eye-opening and a little frightening. Do we have any protections from liability? Yes. Fortunately, we live in a state where our liability protections are strong. For one thing, we have an excellent governmental immunity act. Our public officials liability handbook has a good summary of our liability protections. But to retain these protections, we must stay within the scope of our authority and not act in a willful and wanton manner. You've used those terms before. What would be considered willful and wanton? Well, the actual legal definition is found in the handbook, but basically, it's the kind of conduct that got Appleby in trouble. When he got Tammy fired, he was more than reckless in disregarding her legal rights, purposely trying to damage her career. Do we have any other protections? Sure, we have excellent personal immunities, recognized by our courts when acting on legislative and quasi-judicial matters but we do not have strong immunities when dealing with administrative problems. That's another reason why we need to stay out of administrative issues. Got it. Let the city manager do his job. And finally, we've got good insurance coverage, but that coverage only applies when we act within the scope of our authorized responsibilities and does not apply to punitive damages, as Mayor Appleby learned. I see how these are all interrelated. Best practices, liability protections, and insurance coverages. And each area calls for us to meet certain standards of conduct. As long as we meet those standards of conduct, we should be okay. I think you've got it, Dan. Thanks, Mayor. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge so I don't have to learn the hard way. Thanks for your insights. You're very welcome. And one of the other best practices we put into place is liability training. We hold a session every year for our council members, boards, and commissions. We have a session scheduled next month. Great. I'll be there. Great. Thanks again, Mayor. Absolutely. Dan's a sharp guy. I think he'll make an excellent council member, as long as he follows these best practices. Think and act in terms of we, not I. When acting in a quasi-judicial capacity, be fair and impartial. Don't make up your mind before the hearing. Base your decision on the evidence you hear at the hearing and the applicable law. Don't participate in the hearing or the decision if you have a conflict of interest. And don't engage in ex parte contacts. Refrain from personal or retaliatory actions. Focus on key legislative and quasi-judicial issues and leave administrative matters to the staff and maximize your liability protections by staying within the scope of your authority and avoiding willful and wanton conduct. I hope this video has helped you identify how to stay within the scope of your authority as an elected or appointed official, maximize your liability protections, and enhance your effectiveness as a civic leader. Good luck. Good evening. Thank you all for listening to the video. First of all, on behalf of Mayor Morrow and City Administration, we thank each of you individually and as a group for serving the residents of the City of Gardner. Because of you, we'll have a good planning commission, we'll have good board of zoning appeals, and our government will work effectively. But thank you for your time and your dedication to our city. Also, um, on our property, on our liability um, coverage that you just, you watched a video, Part of that is also understanding and knowing um, the Kansas Open Meetings and Kansas Open Records um, Act. At each of your places, um, 
I know it's in black and white, but you have a little handout that looks like this. I would 